Hoy, if you follow this channel, you know that I'm a fan of SWE. I have a five-figure investment in SWE. I was sitting at a nice profit, and I was oh so very much hoping that I would be able to take it out at my price target of $4.50, and we were getting so close, and the profits, they would have been so sweet. But the main decks on Sui got hacked and nearly a quarter billion dollars was stolen by hackers. We're going to discuss exactly how they were able to achieve this. We're going to discuss the implications of Sui freezing most of those funds. We're also going to discuss who exactly lost money. Was it the investors? Was it the C-suite behind Cetus? Was it Sui? was it the actual liquidity providers so let's start from the beginning and let me explain this in an easy to understand manner so the dex that was hacked was called cetus what is cetus it is a decentralized exchange that was built on the sui and aptos blockchain what is a decentralized exchange? What is Cetus? It basically lets people swap tokens directly and automatically without needing a centralized company like Coinbase or Binance to facilitate the transaction. How does it run? Well, it's thanks to smart contracts. That's what enables all of this to occur. Think of these DEXs, which is the abbreviation DEX. By the way, if you see CEX as an abbreviation in crypto, that's centralized exchange. DEX is decentralized exchange. So just think of CETUS or DEXs as a decentralized vending machine for crypto. Now, in order for this vending machine of crypto to work, there has to be liquidity providers that provide the snacks in the actual vending machine. So liquidity providers are the users who supply tokens to the liquidity pools in order to go ahead and earn rewards for that. Back in the day, the fees that you would earn as a liquidity provider were massive, hundreds of percentage points a year. Now it's a lot less because a lot of people are going ahead and engaging in being liquidity providers. Now again, the whole point for a liquidity provider to go ahead and put a bunch of crypto into a pool is because every time a trade occurs, you earn fees through that trade. Now, also, when I mention liquidity pools, all that is, is this is a place where liquidity providers deposit pairs of tokens into the protocol. And these pools are what enable the swaps that occur on these decentralized exchanges. Now, Cetus is used to trade. So maybe for people like us, if we wanna buy certain tokens, we need to do it because we're trying to buy certain SWE tokens. And so we wanna use a decentralized exchange like Cetus. So there's users of it. There are also liquidity providers that are earning fees by becoming a liquidity provider and giving up some of their crypto for a period of time. And also you have developers that build DeFi tools or decentralized finance tools on top of the smart contracts that Cetus has. So what the hell happened? Well, some brilliant hackers exploited a major vulnerability in the Cetus smart contracts dealing with the pricing oracles and the liquidity pool mechanisms, and they manipulated the bejesus out of it to the tune of 225 to 260 million dollars worth of digital assets. Now the primary victims here were actually the liquidity providers for the liquidity pool which the attackers went ahead and drained. And obviously the other people that lost out money were the investors in Cetus, the actual DEX. You can actually buy Cetus, it is a crypto. And so that went down in value as well. Now Cetus did go ahead and just pause operations completely, which is a big red flag. They also froze a majority of the stolen funds. This is something that always pisses people off in the crypto world because decentralization is the mantra of crypto and when you have a company that's just freezing funds then it says well okay this might be a valid reason to but the next time you do it it might be because the government told you to do it because someone is saying something uh, against a politician or something right people
people are worried the whole point of DeFi is for it to be completely decentralized. That being said, the SWE ecosystem is by no means decentralized. It is a highly centralized project, just like Ripple and XRP, just like Solana. These are very centralized projects. And so personally, in these types of cases, I feel like it is helpful for a central authority to come in and freeze funds. Obviously, it's hackers doing bad things. So about 60 to $63 million worth of USDC was actually bridged out of SWE and it was converted into ETH. So that is pretty much gone. Now, what CDIS is doing is it's working with investigators and it's trying to figure out who's responsible for this. They might be able to take legal action, especially if the party responsible for it is in a country that would even comply, right? You do have hackers in, let's say, North Korea and who cares if legal action is pressed? It doesn't matter. It's not like North Korea is going to extradite people to the U.S. to get them in trouble. So what CDIS did is is they actually offered the hackers a $6 million white hat bounty offer. So they basically said, listen, the funds that you've stolen, just return them to this address, but you could keep $6 million worth for yourself. And when I say white hat, for those of you that don't really know cybersecurity, there are different types of hackers. So you have your black hat hackers. These are your malicious hackers that are trying to steal grandma's and grandpa's money through different scams, right? Or break into bank accounts. This is black hat malicious type of hacking. Then you have white hat hackers. So a lot of corporations, governments, they actually hire hackers to go ahead and try to find exploits and vulnerabilities in their systems. And if they achieve that, they actually go and reward them with a prize, a bounty for going ahead and doing that. And then you also have gray hat hackers, but I don't wanna to get too into the weeds here, so I'll digress. Let's now discuss the implications for SWE and what I am personally doing as far as SWE is concerned. So the first obvious problem is security concerns. Security is a huge issue in the world of crypto. And so the robustness of the SWE ecosystem is in question here. And it also begs the question, are there more vulnerabilities coming down the pipeline? Is the SWE DeFi infrastructure sound? Who is checking on the smart contract design and the Oracle integrations? Because when you're trying to take a project seriously, and again, SWE, we're talking about potential Pokemon collaboration and all these exciting things that are occurring, and then you hear stuff like this. And what if they were actually close or actually in talks with Pokemon and it was about to happen, and then this happened with the decks and Pokemon's like, eh, we're gonna wait a year or two and see because SWE ecosystem is still pretty new. People don't realize that. It's just a couple of years old and it's not as battle tested as something like Ethereum or even Solana and some of these other layer one solutions. Now, I like SWE for a lot of reasons. I've mentioned that in past videos, but I am starting to perhaps rethink of where I'm gonna start locking in profits and I might start putting in some stop loss orders in place as well because when I'm sitting on a nice profit, which I'm still sitting on as far as SWE is concerned, I don't wanna go ahead and lose that. And it's not just me, investor confidence always suffers when you have hacks like this, when something has to be completely paused. Again, they, they stopped operations for a little bit until they were trying to figure out what the heck was going on. TVL is so important. The total value locked in an ecosystem is so important and it's definitely going to suffer. If you take a look at the metrics, it already has in a really big way. We just don't know if this is short-term struggling or long-term struggling. And also, and this can actually bleed out into the broader crypto world, is the regulation and scrutiny. So crypto folks are always worried that the government's going to get involved. There's going to be a ton of oversight and too much regulation. And one way to have that happen is giant hacks like this. This is when people lose a ton of money and the government says, okay, we got to step in into this DeFi game and figure out what the heck is going on. We got to have more checks and balances, more scrutiny, more compliance, stricter rules, oversight. And this is something that does not bode well for the ethos of what cryptocurrency and decentralization is supposed to all be about. So with that being said, I am still 
bullish on Sui, but in a very careful and mindful way. I am closely watching all the headlines. I'm trying to keep an eye on the price action as well. And like I said, I'm gonna put in stop loss orders in place and I'm going to cross my fingers and hopefully Bitcoin is gonna start climbing once more and hit newer all-time highs. And that's gonna drive the rest of the cryptos to go up as well. But I almost feel like I might have better places to park my money in this crypto bull run. I'm not quite ready to pull out of SWE, but I do have a lot in SWE. Currently, it's the third largest position. So Bitcoin is my top position. Chainlink is the number two position and SWE is the number three position. And I do have a five figure investment in there. So I might just slide some out and see what happens in the coming weeks. I mean, this could just be growing pains. They did fix the problems or at least they reported that they fixed the bug and this shouldn't happen again. But who the heck knows? Again, it's still a newer project and everything was going so well for SWE and it was really on its way to breaking into the top 10 crypto projects in the world as far as market cap is concerned. But this is the world of crypto. You get really excited. You do all the due diligence. You feel like you made the right choices. You sit back, you chill. You really believe in a project. You make YouTube videos about it. And then boom, the decentralized exchange that's attached to it gets hacked. It's a terrible look and we're not exactly sure how deep the fallout is going to go from this. So I would tread lightly as far as SWE is concerned at the moment. I would not go ahead and say, wow, Cetus is uh, trading at a discount. Let me go ahead and pump five grand into Cetus. I mean, if you're super rich and you are very tolerant of taking massive risk, I mean, maybe. But I don't even see this point in time as like buying SWE at a discount. It didn't drop that much. So currently it's trading at around $3.65. And at its high just about a couple of days ago, it was at $4 and 20 something cents. So it did drop, but it could have totally been a much bigger drop, especially because TVL has dropped so much. And I think that people are gonna be a little bit apprehensive. I think what's favorable for SWE though is that that there is some short-term memory problems in the crypto space and very quickly people forget about these hiccups but i felt like i should take a couple hours out of my day to create this video for you guys because i went ahead and i put out a lot of sweet content i jumped in at a great price i'm still sitting on decent profits but some of you have been following this channel and you've been following the Sweet project and I want you to know exactly what's going on because I'm never here to advocate on behalf of a crypto and tell you this is the next best thing and this is going to the moon. So I want you to understand the big picture, the pros and cons of every crypto project and every project has pros and cons. In crypto, there are a lot of cons, uh, both literally and figuratively. And with that being said, I hope you guys appreciate the honest take, the honest content. There's no sponsorships. There's no affiliates. I'm just here to learn with the rest of you and hopefully lock in some profits as we go on this journey together. So with that being said, appreciate all of you for sticking around for the majority of the video. And hopefully I'll see some of you in the next one.